Hello and welcome to another installment of FormatCColon.com tutorials. In these tutorials we pick apart and explore topics pertaining to desktop platforms, server administration, network administration, virtualization, web development, and pretty much everything in between. For more in-depth information on any of our topics, please visit our site at www.formatcolon.com where you can find a full step-by-step -step text version of all of the commands and steps performed in each of the video tutorials here, along with tons more videos including tips, tricks, and much more. Hello and welcome to another FormatCColon.com tutorial. In tonight's tutorial we are going to go over a couple of little cleanup things with our application. We are going to go over updating our instance of Composer and Laravel and we're going to go over the flyaway database versioning system and how to implement that so that we can get some database versioning going on with our database. So being that we have a couple of topics, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that we're going to cover is going to be updating your Laravel instance, which is actually a fairly straightforward and easy process. What we need to do is we need to SSH into our web server and from our web server, all, all we need to do here is, as we are uh, already in the server that has the uh, My Movie App DB um, application, we just need to go into the var www html directory where our project lives. And here we have our composer.far file and our My Movie DB uh, directory, which we should be familiar with. Um, in order to update Composer, Composer actually makes it really super, super easy in order to update uh, itself. All you need to do is do php composer.far and then type in self update. And what that'll do is that'll tell Composer to just go out and basically update itself. Um, and once that's been updated, uh, then what we need to do is make sure that we have a copy of that new composer.far in our application directory. So we're going to just copy composer.far into the mymovie.db.local directory. Okay, and there's one that already exists there, and we're just going to go ahead and overwrite that because we want the newer version in there. Um, once we have that in there, all we need to do is go into the My Movie or application directory, and here, in order to update our Laravel instance, again, super, super, super simple. Um, if we do a PHP artisan uh, dash dash version, we can see that right now we're running the Laravel framework 4.1.29. So let's go ahead and update that. I believe 4.2 is already out. Um, and the way that we update that is going to be uh, php composer.far and then just update. And so let's sit back and let this thing do its updating. Okay, and once that has completed, then uh, now if we take a look again at Artisan and do a version, we can see that, uh, oh, it looks like we don't have uh, 4.2 out yet, but uh, 4.1.30 um, was we were updated to. So that's all there really is to actually updating our framework. Um, that went through and updated, if you can see, all of our vendor files, Symfony, um, what else we got here, some, uh, some monologue, uh, just in the actual Laravel framework itself. So it basically went through the entire framework and updated all the components of the framework automatically for us. So super, super easy. Now we're updated to the latest version. So that completes uh, topic number one, super easy. Um, topic number two is going to be dealing with uh, the flyaway database versioning system. So um, if we just open up a browser here real quick and we take a look at flyaway's website, um, I believe it's just flywaydb.org what flyway is is it's a basically it's the same thing as migrations only it just kind of leaves some some more information in our database schema um, so Laravel comes bundled with a database versioning utility called migrations and migrations works basically the same way that flyway works or or maybe I should say that flyway works exactly the same way that migrations works um, you would basically construct a SQL file and then we execute that SQL file and or we we migrate the database I should say and what the migration does is it it will roll that database update to the database server but it will also initially create an, another table called a schema table or a versioning table and 
when we migrate a change to our database, it will register that migration or that change in our database versioning system. So we actually can keep a tr keep track of what version our database is on and kind of see what scripts have been applied and what scripts haven't been applied. Um, with migrations, it kind of gives very, very, very little information. I think it just kind of says like maybe the script name and then what bundle it's in. I, I don't remember it specifically. And I actually, to be honest, I haven't played with it in about six months. But uh, after using migrations, I actually found Flyway. And Flyway actually prints a lot more information in, in our database table, like dates applied and, you know, gives you um, just more static information that I, I personally would rather have in, in the database schema. And it's super easy to implement. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to have to grab, uh, looks like 3.0 is available here. So um, what I'm going to do is I want to actually grab the command line uh, version of this, right? So if you click on the command line link, it'll kind of give you some procedures on, you know, how to use the command line. However, I'm going to kind of show you that now anyway. Um, so what we need to do is just go down to this download link here to actually download it. And I'm just going to grab, uh, it doesn't really matter if I grab the zip or the tar, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the tarball. And then the other thing that I am going to need because I'm dealing with a MySQL database, uh, I'm going to need the MySQL JDBC connector. So let's go ahead and just hit up the, My the MySQL site here. Platform independent. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the tar again. And let's go ahead and download that as well. I believe I have a login. This part will be blanked out. Okay, and so once we have registered for a free account or signed in with our existing MySQL account, which you should probably have anyway in order to be able to download MySQL and versions and whatnot, um, what we're going to do is we are going to just go ahead and fill out this little quick form. Uh, let's just say other... Uh, job function. I am systems administrator. Number of employees. We'll just make up some stuff here. Uh, let's see. In this section, I don't need to check anything because I really don't want to be contacted by anything. I just want the stupid JDBC connector. Uh, and I always love these captures. I can never actually read them. Uh, I'm not sure if that's an H or a B, but I see kind of a rounding. So I'm going to go with B. Let's see if we're correct. Oh, look at that. CAPTCHA is incorrect. I hate these things. Needless to say, we will not be going over implementing a CAPTCHA on our web application. Um, I hate them. I will not use them. I will figure out a different way to verify if I need to. So um, after that, you have the download link for the MySQL connector. So we can just go ahead and grab that as well. And once we have done that, we can go ahead and let's go back to our, I'm going to need to go back to my Mac and actually go into my downloads folder here. And I'm going to SCP the MySQL connector along with the flyaway tar files to our web server. It would help if I put in the right address. Okay. And now if we go to our temp directory, we should have both the flyaway connector and the MySQL or the flyaway command line utility as well as the MySQL uh, connector. Um, and so I will be providing links to all of this stuff as well, uh, in the notes section below. Um, so now what we need to do is we actually need to install the, uh, open GDK. So if we do a yum search for open JDK, let's go ahead and grab and install that. This is a Java based command line utility. So we will need Java installed.
Okay, and here we see we have the availability of grabbing the 1.6 or the 1.7 uh, OpenJDK. I'm going to grab the 1.7. So I'm just going to do a yum install for Java. I think actually it's a little bit more visual if we just put the put the files directly in the directory uh, through our host operating system. So even though I I already did uh, SCP these files up here, I think that we'll just go ahead and do that through the Mac interface. Um, but now if I type in Java-version, um, I do get the OpenJDK environment, so it shows me that my Java is in fact installed. Now in order to install the Flyway Utility and the JDBC connector, um, all we need to do here is grab the documents and that way we can open that folder up. Um, and so what we, what we need to do first is obviously extract, okay? And once we've uh, untarred them, you see, okay, what we'll do first is we're going to install the Flyway. And in order to install Flyway, it's actually super, super simple. Again, of course, um, all we need to do is open up our public folder. So, of course, my Mac is mounted uh, like normal to my uh, web server. So this uh, mymoviedb.local file um, does reside on my web server. As you can see, we just updated Composer and, and Composer was updated today. So, so what I need to do is open up the mymoviedb.local or application directory folder and then go inside of app and then inside of app we have that database folder and right here in this database folder is where we can actually install our flyaway. So uh, what I'm going to do is just open up another window here and go back to the directory where I uh, untarred flyaway and all I'm going to do is just grab the entire flyaway directory structure and I'm going to stick it right into the database. Uh, folder okay and so now under database I've got the flyaway folder and see I do have migrations here still so again I could be using migrations I'm not gonna do that obviously that's why I'm installing flyaway but um, that's where we're gonna find it in our directory structure right underneath the database folder now as far as the MySQL connector folder uh, all we need to do is grab let's see find the JDBC connector which is gonna be this bin.jar file right here and we just need to stick that right here inside of the jars folder so let's just again just drag and drop that guy into our folder and that's pretty much it as far as uh, installing our flyaway. Um, what we'll want to do now is we have this SQL folder right here. And this is actually where we're going to put our SQL queries or our SQL uh, files. Um, when we actually create new versions of our SQL scripts, we're going to stick them in there. And then we'll be able to migrate those. And so we see that we do have this version 1 right here. Um, we're not going to apply that because we already have this stuff in the database. Um, but what we do need to do real quick here is we need to actually uh, initialize the table. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first connect to MySQL, okay, just to show you guys the current database structure. And right now we've got uh, okay. And if we do a show tables on this, you see we only have the users table. That's all we've got in there, okay? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually browse to that directory now. So in the var www uh, html mymoviedb.local my folder, um, then we're going to need to go into the app and then database folder, okay? And we have the flyaway folder now, so we're going to go into the flyaway folder. And then we're just going to go into the bin. And here we've got the flyaway command. Um, actually, we're not. We're going, to, we're going to back up one folder here. So we should be right before the bin. And you see we have flyaway right here. And that's actually the executable, right? So um, all I need to do in order to initiate or uh, use flyaway is going to be um, actually first, I'm lying. First, we need to actually configure it, right? So what we're going to do is we need to go into the conf directory. And in the conf directory, we have a flyways.property file. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, go over here to our, our project. And inside of our project, again, if we open the app folder and then open the database folder, now we have this flyaway folder. 
All right. And uh, in the flyaway folder, we can just go into the conf and open up the flyaway properties. Okay. And we really only need three things here. Um, those three things are going to be we need the flyaway driver, the f I'm sorry, we need the flyaway URL, the flyaway user, and the flyaway password. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we are going to um, type in for the URL. It's going to be the JDBC address, right? So JDBC MySQL, and then the IP of the server. In this case, it is localhost. Obviously, if I'm using a different database server, then it would be a different um, URL structure there. And then I'm going to put a slash and then the database that I'm connecting to, which is going to be uh, MyMovieDB. Oh, and actually, and we need to specify the port as well here. So the MySQL port is 3306. And then as far as the flyaway user is concerned, we can go ahead and just use the same credentials that we've already used within our config for Laravel. So if we just go ahead and open up the uh, config directory and then look at the database um, file here, we have the movie man and watch movies user. So let's go ahead and just copy the username right from there. And we're going to go ahead and paste it into the Flyway user. And then for the password, we're going to go ahead and grab that same password and we're going to put it in here. And the, oops, still thinking I'm in a Unix shell here. And then we can go ahead and save this file. We can go ahead and close out the database file. And then we can go back to our command prompt because now we should be good to go. Um, if I, again, just cat that Flyway file. or it should vim it so that we can actually scroll. You see that that information is right there. And now to test it, what we need to do is we need to actually initialize Flyaway so that it will create the initial uh, schema table inside of our database. So in order to do that, um, we're going to back up one directory so that we are uh, into the directory root of Flyaway, and we're going to type in dot slash Flyaway and init. And let's just take a look. The reason is probably because let's just take a look at the permissions of the jar. Jar file is actually owned by me, so we should be able to execute that. It might actually not like the local host definition that we put into the properties file. So I actually haven't tested it out with uh, local host. Um, so let's go ahead and actually put in the IP address which would be 172.16.79.250 and let's try that and I don't know why I'm typing in HTTP that's not right okay so let's go ahead and save this file now again and give it another go And that's looking better. Okay, so apparently you can't use the local host definition. Um, so it says that it created the meta table uh, in the MyMovieDB database called schema version. And it also says that the schema was initialized with a version one. So now if we go ahead and connect back to our database here. And do a show tables you'll see that now we have this schema version, okay? And if we just do a uh, select star select star from schema version, and we'll just make that nice and human readable, um, you'll see that we've got one row here, and so um, it shows us that we are version one, uh, just did the initialization of the flyaway database, no checksum, but it does give us the date that it was installed, execution time, um, whether or not it was a success, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we can test this out now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our users table here. Um, so let's do a describe users. And uh, let's see if we can uh, go ahead and change something. Um, let's see, what do we got? So actually, we probably don't want to change our user table. So um, just because we have the application all set to use it, and we don't want to have to modify the application uh, for 
just for demonstration purposes. So um, again, if we do a show tables, we've got nothing. What we'll do is we'll just create a new table real quick. And so the way that we would do that is we will uh, go ahead and close this flyaway properties file now. And inside of the SQL, now it's just important, um, like I said before, or like I said when we actually created our SQL file to create our schema here, okay, um, the version number is actually going to be picked up from parsing the actual file name, okay, so we want to stick to this file name convention. So in order to create a new SQL file, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a new file within the SQL directory, right? So I'm going to do new file, and uh, the, what I'm going to name this file, I'm going to go ahead and save it, and what I'm going to name this file is capital V1, okay, for the major version, and then dash 1 for the minor version, and then two dashes, and that separates basically the versioning number from the actual name of the script that we're applying. So uh, we will call this script uh, create movies. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and save that. And what we'll do here is we'll just copy this block right over here. Okay, and I'm just going to paste that in here. And instead, we're just going to modify a couple of things. We're going to say create the movies table, drop the table if exists movies. So all we're doing is creating a, a new blank table called movies. And we'll leave the ID in there and we'll get rid of everything else. Okay, so we're just going to create nothing but a, uh, a table called movies and it'll have one ID field in there and that's that's it. And I still think I'm in the shell. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that file and now in order to migrate that script or to install the database changes we no longer have to manually um, run these scripts against the database anymore instead what we're gonna do here is just make sure that we're in our flyaway directory and again all I have to do is use the flyaway command and I'm gonna type in uh, flyaway migrate and Let's see, uh, looks like no migration necessary. Uh, let's see why that would be. Oh, okay, so two things about the name. Um, I just got myself on the actual name. So one other thing to note here is that with the name, we said that we have the major version and then we have the minor version, but we can also have a build number because um, there could be multiple builds within a specific subversion uh, of you know a project that we're working on or whatever. So just for total proper naming, um, I can actually add a another identifier here for the build number. So I'm going to say one, and I'm going to change this to version one two, just so that we have. Uh, absolutely zero confusion as far as the init because when it did when flyway did init it admitted it as version one okay so now we've got major version one sub version two which is kind of 1.2 dash build number one okay and the reason why this didn't pick up is because I didn't name it sequel so it does have to have the name of sequel on it and also this is actually I'm also syntax highlighting here as sequel and I'm not seeing any C oh I've got a comment bracket wrong so okay so now it looks like we have uh, migrated successfully um, it shows that uh, we've migrated the schema to version 1.2.1 um, it also shows us a warning, unknown table movies, which is fine because that, that did not exist, right? But then it, success, it successfully applied the migration. So um, what I'm thinking is, is that this was the if statement where it said if drop or if exists, drop it. And it, it didn't know what that was. So let's actually check it. Um, if we go into my SQL and use my movie DB and do a show tables. Uh, we now have a movies table, okay? And if we do a describe movies, 
uh, we've got the ID field that we set. So the migration file worked fine. Now the one thing, um, the one other thing that I do want to show you is what actually happens if you error out. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this again, and we're going to create yet another file. Um, we do have to keep those in place. So uh, if we were to delete it, then uh, you know, or change the number here. So this original file, after we've ran it, we need to just close it. We have to completely keep it and keep it the way it is. Um, it is actually checksummed in the database. Um, so if you take a look here now and do a select star from schema version, uh, and then let's look at everything in human readable format, you'll see that there's actually a checksum for this, right? So it parses the file, grabs all of the uh, the versioning information, grabs a description from the file, but it also checksums the file, okay? And uh, shows who it was installed by, install date, and everything else. This checksum is the actual checksum of this uh, version 1.2.1 file, right? So, not this one, this one. So if we change this file at all, that checksum is no longer going to match. And if we try to run a migrate, then uh, uh, Migrations is going to um, kick up its heels in a fiery, furious storm. So let's go ahead and just create a second file here. Uh, we will, let's say... Uh, let's just throw in a statement here. Um, we're going to purposely mess up the SQL syntax here just to show you how you recover from that and what happens when you uh, do screw up the syntax a little bit. So um, what we're going to do is I'm just actually going to trash all this. And now that we've got the table already there, let's do uh, create um, movie field. And what I'm going to do here is just do an alter, alter, table movies and we are going to add a field called name which can be a var whoops var care uh, let's do 25 after ID okay but now I want to screw this up. So let's uh, let's see. How do we screw this up? Let's just do table, and we'll leave out the alter. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this file, and we're gonna save this as one two two, and we'll name it uh, movie field. And we don't want a space in there or it will fail. Okay. And then let's go ahead and exit this and watch what happens when we migrate. Okay. So you'll see we, we are going to get an error, right? And it's going to say it failed, um, blah, 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 blah didn't go through successfully. So if we look here at the table now, you'll see that we've got this last uh, entry for the movie field and it was a failed success zero. So as long as there's an entry in the database, okay, um, that shows a success zero, my, uh, Flyaway will no longer migrate any more scripts. It'll stop migrating any further scripts um, and it will not it will not push another update to the database until you clear out that row. And so the way that we can just do that is all we have to do to fix this is just type in uh, delete from schema versions where version rank is equal to three. Okay, we're going to match it by this criteria. schema version okay 
So now if we do a show all again, you'll see we only have the one and two. Um, if we go back and we fix this guy so that it is correct, so we're adding the name field. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we go back and we remigrate. You'll see now it has successfully migrated to version 1.2, so the error has been fixed. Um, and if we go ahead and do the select all, we'll see that uh, we have the version 3 here. Now the success is 1. And if we check... We check the movies table, we'll see that the new field has been added. So uh, that's really all there is to uh, migrations. Um, basically, you just at this point from now on, we're going to go ahead and whoops, we're going to go ahead and create our scripts inside of uh, our project now, and and then when we go to apply those updates to our environment we can just apply it in one solid swoop. Now, from experience, having a thousand of these SQL files in the SQL directory, although it's not gonna hurt anything, um, you know, it, it just doesn't look clean. So um, what I would probably suggest and the practice that I kind of take with when, when I'm coding my applications is that uh, we will actually create one uh, version file. And what I'll still do is I will still incrementally add commands or add schema changes to the database manually so that I can actually test out the syntax and I make sure that uh, they are that, it, that it's all working correctly and while I put those into my development environment I just put them also into a into a SQL file here and that way I build the SQL file kind of through the development process and once I'm ready to push you know that the, all those changes including the code changes and the database schema changes and everything to you know a different environment like a test environment or a um, or my production environment then I will go ahead and just do a flyaway migrate and that way it migrates all those changes one shot done did um, and everything is good so I mean it's kind of whatever you know whatever works for you if you don't mind you know a thousand files in a folder then I mean by all means you can do that I like to keep things nice and clean so I kind of keep you know I kind of keep the SQL files to specific versions and and uh, try to do it that way. Um, that way, at least I know that if there's a big structural change, you know, from the version that I'm on versus the version that I'm going to, I'll, I'll know where my database is at. So, so those are the only uh, two topics that uh, I actually really wanted to cover uh, in tonight's tutorial. Um, I was going to go through and uh, I I have actually uh, on the side kind of developed the uh, user add and uh, user modify screens um, inside of Laravel and I'm just kind of debating I'm not sure that I'm gonna apply those right yet so because um, thinking thinking about it now I mean aren't as of the next video we're gonna start moving on to angular um, we're gonna the, the next tutorial video will be wiring angular up and getting uh, getting our project ready for uh, creating angular front ends um, and we might just move all the the user stuff to the angular front end um, or make a separate admin module. I haven't exactly decided how I want to do it yet. So, um, and if not, then, you know, I will take the, uh, the code that I have written for the, uh, showing the users and for editing users and I will apply that. And I guess for now I will, uh, as a, like an added bonus, I will apply, uh, that stuff onto the format C colon dot com to text tutorial site so that way if you want to scroll below the stuff that we've gone over here and you want to you know add that stuff now then you can by all means do that um so that's about uh, all i wanted to uh, cover just kind of some cleanup episode to kind of get the versioning all set and basically get us into a place where we are uh ready to wire up and start using angular so i hope you enjoyed this video uh if you did enjoy this video or if you have enjoyed any of the other videos then please hit the subscribe button below. Also, feel free to leave any comments, suggestions, requests, uh, any sort of feedback in the comment section below. I definitely like hearing the feedback from you guys, like hearing what you're thinking about the series, about the videos. And other than that, as always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time. Thanks.